I think we could all agree that this tight end class is much better than last season's, and we're going to get into it in a moment, but I'm Steve Miller Gardell, better known as What's Crack Lack, and it's your boy, Brush Mode, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro, and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. If you're viewing this elsewhere, go to YouTube, type in Brochmo, and subscribe. I put out a lot of draft content as well as a variety of different football content. So go ahead, do that. But without further ado, let's talk about this tight end class because really good, especially near the top, as I think we, we have some first-round contenders. I think we could kind of all agree on. At least there's two, top two. And I'm going to start with my number one, Kyle Pitts out of Florida. The dude is probably the most athletically gifted among the others, which says a lot because this class is really good. He has the largest sample size as uh, from last year. He had 81 targets, as far as a receiver, that is. Um He's very good at going up and just getting the ball. He had 14 contested catches in 2019. He's uh, honestly the best vertically among this group. He separates pretty well. He's kind of just like a big receiver, and they kind of use him that way. They would kick him, kick him out to the outside occasionally, which <sighs> he isn't a great blocker. But keep in mind, the kid's only 19. There's still a lot of room left to grow, but... When it comes to being a receiver, the guy is pretty darn good. He had pretty good tape versus Derek Stanley last year, which not a lot of people can say. You just got a lot love the mix of speed and size. It'll just he'll just be a nightmare for anyone anyone that's trying to match up on him for uh, NFL that's trying to look for the next George Kittle or uh, Travis Kelsey. I think this is probably the closest you're gonna get right now. And then at number two, I got Pat Fryermuth out of Penn State. Very good in-line blocker. Almost, uh, almost among the best in this class. I think there's one guy that edges him out in that. But he may not be the fastest in the class, but the dude, he gets yak. Yards after catch. The guy's very physical and just hard to bring down. Just kind of shrugs off contact. He's tough after the catch. And like I said, he's he's got a load of experience, whether it be in line, on the outside, or even in the slot. And then at number three, I got Brevin Jordan out of Miami, man. The you, a Hurricanes fan, just in case you didn't know. Uh, he's a very physical, athletic freak. The guy's going to blow up the combine, that's for sure. A lot of people want to pin his lack of production on Miami's quarterback issues throughout the... <laughs> it's been a long time, actually. But uh, he... Very physical after the catch, but what you don't like to see, he's not, doesn't have that good of ball skills. He's He was only 2 of 11 on contested catches. He really does need to work on his out route running. And he just, like I said, athletic freak. He just kind of kind of learned the finer things of being a receiving tight end with that type of physical upside. And then at 4, I got Charlie Collar out of Iowa State. This guy, he split time in line and in the slot. He's sneaky good at getting behind defense, especially on that crosser route that tight ends love to run. I mean, good route for tight ends, so why not? Huge catch radius. He's not so great after the catch, but still, he's a quality option, especially if you're looking for someone maybe early day two or mid day two. A uh, very bright kid as well. He was a academic All American nominee in 2019. And then at number five, I got Josh Peterson out of Louisiana Monroe. He is actually the son of the Eagles coach, Doug Peterson. The guy's just a chain mover. And I mean, you could just take a look at that Florida State tape. He just utterly demolished that team. And that was a pretty darn good defense. He did that too. He showed a big, he showed a nose for the big play. Does need to add some weight. He's only, what, 232. But. In terms of ball skills, I like what I see. And then at number six, I have Hunter Long out of Boston College. This is a guy I actually recently checked out. Um, great length. He's honestly got some good length. Uh, he combines that with some speed and quickness. Uh, he won't beat many corners, at least with his uh, athletic ability, but definitely going to cause like safeties and linebackers. Probably some fits. He could definitely be a mismatch nightmare in that aspect. He's displayed good hands, but we're talking about a very limited sample size at this point. And I mean, when it when it came to his play last year, it, 
it was more times than not he was getting behind defenses because teams were just kind of selling out on the deep ball just to stop AJ Dillon. I mean, who won? So he would sneak behind defenses. So he kind of got freebies in that regard. And I think he only had like 22 or 29 receptions last year. So maybe, I don't know, we'll see in Jeff Halfley's, um offense or at least his vision for this offense, how Hunter, um, Hunter Long will look and maybe he could elevate his stock. And then at number seven, nope, six, nope, seven, ha, <laughs> numbers, tough. Uh, I got Jake Ferguson out of Wisconsin. Now, Ferguson, solid, solid run blocker. I mean, you got to be in that Wisconsin offense. So he's played a lot in a pro style offense, which is good to see. He saw much more time uh, being an inline blocker than a receiver, but he he was pretty darn good at a receiver. I mean, as a receiver, he was good after the catch. He was very physical, um, especially despite the size, because he's only two thirty, um, and which is crazy to say because they used him a lot as an inline blocker, and he was holding up at two thirty. So honestly, maybe just add ten pounds and he might be good in the NFL. I don't know, but athletically he is lacking. So. And maybe everything we've seen as a receiver from him, uh, it kind of gets toned down when he goes to the NFL just because of lack of athletic ability. So we'll see. I'm kind of on the fence, but the guy, again, still solid receiving ability. And then next, I have ooh, Luke Farrell out of Ohio State. This guy, ooh, mm, mm, mm. great size, very athletic, small sample size, though. Uh, again, he you just there isn't a lot of it. Um, they're playing they're playing at Ohio State. He doesn't really have a huge route tree. Remember, they're a very screen heavy offense. So he's kind of just a projection at this point, but a guy to definitely keep your eye on. And that kind of goes double fold for the other Ohio State tight end. And then I got Trey McBride out of Colorado State. That is, uh, this guy honestly might not even come out this year. But he split time in line in the slot and out wide. He has some of the best hands in this class. Uh, he was 8 and 10 on contested catches. Probably the best blocker. I mean, and that's that was the guy I was kind of mentioning earlier where uh, Friermuth, very good blocker. This guy, I think, is better. Um, he has really good speed, but it's when it comes to after the catch, it's not like he's very... It's He's kind of a big tight end, you know? The dude is... 260 he he knows he's not gonna sh shake defenders so instead he just kind of pulls them over which i mean hey you, if you can do it do it if that he does it so i ain't gonna complain about that but we rarely ran um he rarely ran routes actually from the tight end position whenever they would really did want him to uh, use him as a receiver they would kick him into the slot or outside on top of that, he's kind of an average route runner with not too much of a route tree. So I hope to see that expand a little bit. He's only going to be 20 this fall. So again, a guy that might wait to come out, but I could definitely see the upside. And then at 10, I have Nick Muse out of South Carolina. He was actually a transfer from William & Mary, which is actually right up the street from where I lived. But um like 40 minutes up the street from where I live. But he's a very powerful athlete, especially after the catch. He's very sudden and nimble in his movements. Good set of hands. Um, he feels a bit short when attacking the football. Like he, it, it's weird. It just doesn't seem like he's the first one at the catch point, which is a problem when you're the target, you know? So that's maybe one a little nitpick that on top of the injuries maybe a little bit of a concern but you know something that will get checked out you know you don't want to you don't want to just miss those or like glance over those you want to take a look at those so um hope everything does check out with him and i hope we see him have a big healthy year this season but that's my top 10 you can see the rest of my list on fan to fan network i'll leave the link in the description below as well as it's the pinned comment there we go but until next time you be easy my friend later